In Acts 1711 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning. This is devotional number 418, and today's date is March 7th, 2018. We've been taking a look at the subject of grief this week, and I'd like to read the account of the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings 4, <clears throat> excuse me, 8 through 37, which is reminiscent of both Elizabeth, who was John the Baptist's mother, and Sarah, Abraham's wife, in that all three of them were unable to bear children, and yet God graciously granted them conception. This woman was told by Elisha that she would bear a child, which is what she truly desired. Yet she was naturally skeptical due to her physical condition and expressed her concern to Elisha. Nevertheless, she did bear a son who, after a number of years, suddenly died one day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which path, passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto her, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? What hast thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, what is, what is to be done for her? What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, Thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. And she called unto her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God, and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to, his, to her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, 
She caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to thrust her away, and the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and Jehovah hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As Jehovah liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto Jehovah. And he went up, and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. The death of a child, regardless of age, is unbearably painful. We see the acute trauma this poor woman was concealing when, out of desperation, she reminded Elisha of what she had said to him prior to conception in verse 28. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Humanly speaking, we can certainly empathize with this dear woman's plight because it appeared as if a cruel irony had taken place. The Hebrew word rendered, Do not deceive me, is only found in Second Chronicles 29.11 where it is rendered, be not now negligent. Uh, it's actually Strong's number 7952. The context has to do with the start of King Hezekiah's reign, in which he commanded the priests and the Levites, the ones who are being addressed as my sons, to cleanse the temple and to rectify the previous negligence and spiritual pollution that had been allowed to enter and foster therein. My sons, be not now negligent, for Jehovah hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Returning to our account in 2 Kings 4, we know that Elisha did not deceive or was in any way derelict with regard to his promise to this woman. When we discover how God tenderly and mercifully resolves this whole agonizing episode. However, to the casual observer, this indeed might seem to be the case. With regard to the word translated vexed, which is Strong's number 4843, it's a term that denotes grief, a choler, or anger, but primarily bitterness. The following are a few examples of how God uses this particular word. Uh, Ruth 120 is noteworthy uh, in that this word mara means bitterness and is a derivative of the verb vexed, or as it is rendered here as bitterly. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. Incidentally, Naomi is referring to her bitter plight because of the multiple tragedies that happened to her 
and her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, who had all become widows as Naomi's husband, Elimelech, and her two sons, Malon and Chilion, had all died. But just as with the Shunammite woman, the book of Ruth has a most blessed ending. Also in uh, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, God recounts uh, David's dire predicament. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in Jehovah his God. 